a change to a new K-pop generation. It's both a controversial and confusing topic among K-pop fans, as a new generation in K-pop marks the change of a major shift in music. But Korean media and TV channel, Mnet, would add fire, igniting a firestorm on this generational topic. Last year in 2023, Mnet declared that K-pop is now in 5th gen. After they wrapped up their music survival show, Boy's Planet, Mnet proclaimed that Zero Base One would be one of the new faces of 5th generation. But after Mnet's proclamation, many K-pop fans didn't agree and they were quite angry at the Korean media company, as many Korean news labels started writing articles that we are now in 5th gen. So with Mnet and the Korean media proclaiming that 2023 is the start of 5th gen, is that actually true? In my humble opinion, no, we're not. In fact, I would say that 5th gen is coming this year in 2024, if not at the latest next year in 2025. And when that time eventually comes, there's gonna be a new wave of excitement in K-pop, and I can't wait. But until then, there's a lot of pushback from K-pop fans that say that we're not in 5th gen just yet. And a big reason is that fans think that a Korean media company shouldn't be able to proclaim a new generation. So with Mnet saying that we're in fifth generation to promote Zero Base One, a lot of fans see through that and think, well, you're just proclaiming this new generation just so you can get Zero Base One off the ground. And it does put unneeded pressure on Zero Base One or ZB1 for short as being this face for fifth gen something they never asked for. With this poll from international fans showing that the majority of fans disagree that 5th gen started in 2023 just because Mnet said so. Many fans think that a media company shouldn't dictate whether it's a new generation or not, as proclaiming a new generation out of nowhere feels like a marketing gimmick or feels very gimmicky and slimy. Many fans would like generations to be decided organically, where most fans will eventually agree upon a generation starts in a particular year. I mean, it sure beats giving control to a media company like Mnet, which definitely has their own motives for declaring a new generation out of nowhere. And I do think that the classic fans deciding when a generation eventually starts is not a bad way to decide generations, but in my opinion, I do have a much better way of deciding generations, as we'll go over later in this video. Yet, the very fact that media companies such as Mnet, as well as K-pop fans, are arguing when fifth generation is starting presents a big problem. How does the K-pop community decide on K-pop generations? So this is a good question. As of the time of this video, there's no official way to decide when K-pop generations are differentiated. So take American music, for instance. Most American music fans will simply go by decades, such as the 80s, the 90s, to 2000s, and so on. Yet, if you've been in K-pop for any amount of time, you know K-pop generations are quite confusing. And that's because there's no official music body or organization that sets these generations apart. So when I was looking up online, what fans thought when each generation started, I got vastly different answers. And I can't blame these fans. So for the purposes of this video, we're gonna go with what I think the generations should be or how I personally define them. So for first generation, many people go with either 1996 to 2002 or the 90s to 2002. So for this video, we're gonna go with the 90s to 2002. Then second generation, 2003 to 2011, third generation, 2012 to 2017, fourth generation, 2018, the present, and that fifth generation, well, we don't know just yet. It's a sensitive and controversial topic to many fans. So while we don't have an official way to decide these generations just yet, there are some noticeable patterns where generations are organically set, that they're eventually agreed upon by the fandom. And some of these metrics include a big time gap, a six to eight year span between each generation, previous gen groups taking over, major tier S and tier A groups from the previous generations hitting their prime in the next generation, previous groups fading out, these same powerhouse groups of the last generation go on hiatus or start to retire, new groups from major labels take over from retiring last gen groups, and major events such as K-pop expanding into Asia, going global, or making major news. 
So one example is second generation, which I personally believe happened in 2003. There was this large span between first and second gen. While many major first gen groups didn't hit their stride in the second gen, and that's because many powerhouse groups from first gen already retired or were fading from relevance, such as HOT, SES, Finkel, and Chexkis. Then we have new second gen groups starting to take over from first gen groups, such as Super Junior, TVXQ, Big Bang, Kara, Girls' Generation, Wonder Girls, and so on. And then for major events, K pop started to slowly take over Asia and eventually overthrew J-pop in 2009. And the other big event is that YG officially joined the big three. Now, one factor I didn't mention as much about differentiating generations is a new sound or a new vibe. And that's because a generation can have multiple sounds. So many fans do believe correctly that 21 started the girl crush concept in second generation. A lot of fans think that the girl crush concept was further amplified by third gen and Blackpink. And that's what makes third gen stick out. But third gen actually has a lot of multiple sounds and vibes, such as cutesy teenage pop, bubblegum pop, and of course, girl crush concepts. So that's why I didn't put unique sound as one of the defining factors of a generation. As I said in the beginning of this video, I do think right now we're still in fourth gen as it's been peaking for the last few years, especially for female groups. We have groups such as Hive, New Jeans, Stacy, Nmix, Baby Monster, and Triple S, just to name a few of them. And in groups, we got bangers such as Zero Base One, Zygers, Rise, and Boy Next Door. I personally think that it's too early to decide that it's suddenly fifth gen. With that being said, I can understand how K-pop fans can be confused of the generations. Where does it start? Where does it end? And which gen are we currently in? So I think that for K-pop to further grow and expand, an official way needs to be set on how to differentiate these K-pop generations once and for all. So now we're gonna get into how we can differentiate between these generations and come up with some solutions. So the first one, as mentioned in the beginning of the video, is have the fans decide organically, where fifth generation started this year in 2024. Fans go, you know, I think in 2024, fifth gen started, and it slowly passes on until it becomes accepted by the majority. But there are some flaws with this method. A big one is that fans might not know when a generation starts or is accepted as that year until a couple years later. So fifth gen, could start in 2024, but fans might not agree until 2025 or 2026. So we might not know for a few years. Second choice is the simple American method where you go with decades. Now decades makes it very easy to differentiate because when a new decade happens, it's just a new generation. However, as many K-pop fans will argue correctly, I might add, is that K-pop generations go much faster than 10 years. The trends change, the major events change, the new groups change, and so on, as we talked about a bit earlier. And then now we get to my preferred choice, the third option, and that is giving that generation power to a respected and esteemed Korean music organization. And the two that I have in mind and that I personally worked with is RIAC, or the Recording Industry Association of Korea, or the Korea Music Awards. And to briefly explain both, so RIAC is this nonprofit organization. They promote Korean music history, hold many K-pop and Korean business conferences every year, and protects the rights of producers and music writers within the industry. And with the Korea Music Awards, they're the least known award show to most international fans. And that's because they askew the vanity metrics, namely fan voting. So without fan voting, most fans aren't gonna be interested in the show where fans will be more interested in shows such as the Melon Music Awards or the Mamas, which do have fan voting. So what makes the Korea Music Awards really cool is that all the awards on the show are decided by professionals, such as producers, music writers, former artists, radio show hosts, people at academia, and so on. The professionals getting together and thinking what's the most impactful songs and artists of that year. And then they argue about it without any of the numbers and then they come to a consensus and you have your winners. And I think a big trust factor into this award show is that it doesn't favor idols. In fact, there's a lot of emphasis on Korean hip hop, indie, trot, 
and other non-idle music, which in my opinion, I think is a pretty good trust factor as they're not just gonna give awards to the biggest idol artist of the year. Now, of course, this solution isn't perfect either as maybe some judges might have a particular bias towards uh, artists and vote for them, but I would put my trust in professional organizations such as these two, rather than giving that power to a media company such as Mnet, where they can try to influence generations based on their own self-interest. So I do think that fifth gen is coming very soon. And as I said earlier, I do think it's coming perhaps this year in 2024, if not next year in 2025. And the reasons are we're seeing new groups from the big four. And yes, I include Hybe in that, such as YG Entertainment's Baby Monster. And we won't see BTS as a group until 2025, since they're in the military, although their solos from their individual members are still extremely popular. So maybe we aren't out of BTS mania. And then we're seeing new trends, such as international K-pop groups, such as America to Korea and its group, Bicha, and Dream Academy and its group, Cat's Eye. And of course, the good old classic time span. It's been a good seven or so years since we've had a generation shift. And perhaps it's time. I think we're due for a generation change very soon. And when that happens, K-pop is gonna get a lot more exciting. I'm hoping that for future generations, the K-pop community will have an official way to define them. So the K-pop controversies of, are we in a new generation, are finally put to rest. And I'm hoping that my suggestion to give this generation authority to respected Korean music organizations is a serious option as a solution. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, you may wanna grab our free in-depth ebook by signing up to our email list. And if you want more deep discussion about K-pop with fellow intellectuals, consider joining our Discord channel. Both links are in the description below.